Studio. Check. Frequencies check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Come on. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Come on, Rocking the mind, body, and soul. Energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Okay, okay. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. NFL Week 10, Dream. Very excited about it today, especially after all the madness in collegiate football yesterday. Pat, I do just got to say, every time I hear that intro right there, it just gets the blood flowing oh, at Of course, me. man. Absolutely. That is Ashanti, only you guys. And you know what? It, it, it starts off just a little kind of teaser, and then it's like, boom! No Kills doubt, you, definitely a hot track, man. Whenever I hear that at the gym, it's like I get explosive. So, yesterday, college football landscape bananas. All right, we get Georgia finally goes down to Auburn. You know, Georgia, one thing I noticed about Georgia, I don't know if you watched the game at all, Hat. Georgia came out with no huddle at the beginning of the game to go tempo. Um, I, right yeah, you know what? I was bouncing Georgia. between a bunch of games yesterday, and I didn't really pay too much attention on that one because I didn't really have any money on it. So, okay. Um, but I, I, dude, you know what, Dream? I, you know, you got an interconference match up there. You've got, you know, the SEC running wild. You, you've got a home team underdog. I mean, whatever. Uh, I, I just, I never thought Georgia was the team. Right. I never thought it. I, we went, we talked about this last week, two weeks ago. I, I just never really felt like it. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you got a team like Bama that won ugly, but they still won. You got to go out and win those games if you are a national title contender. Dude, they came down the field and went tempo yeah. on their opening drive, no huddle, and scored immediately. And then that was the end of it. My thing is, I don't understand you have some success with something and it shows you what you were capable of doing. I don't understand why they didn't push tempo again and again when they got the ball. They let things get way out of hand early in that game and it was never able to pull back well that should have been something they should have kept going with i mean at least until it uh you know until the other team caught on but you know you, you got the top four teams that were the top four teams being georgia bama uh notre dame and clemson and two out of the four lose as notre dame got murdered by the u dream and the you still booty. I don't care about that. <laughs> you guys could you me to death and home team dog and all that whatever nonsense. <laughs> I don't know, man. The you is still black hat. Shut up. Home teams got beat yesterday. But I see Bama handle their, their home. That dog. Yeah, but they didn't cover the spread, Dream. Ah, uh, whatever. You Come on. I don't play spreads. <laughs> <laughs> Money you line don't it. Play spreads. Money line it. Yep, exactly. I see Seattle handled eight of his scissor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's plenty of. I mean, look, that's. I don't know. I, I, I think so far this season, that's probably been about 50 50. So. Like I said, I always roll well. I try to pick the best team on the field and manipulate the line in my favor. Uh, I did like Notre Dame yesterday. I felt Notre Dame was the better team of the two teams. I'm not sold that Miami's a good team, and I'm still not. Something does happen in college football. Of course, I do believe it's very hard for the away team to win in college football. Very, very hard, especially in you know certain specific situations. That situation is probably one I should have stayed away from. But I was feeling good because I won a bunch of games during the week. Yeah. 
you know, and I won, you know, I was back and forth on Saturday, so I gave it a shot last night. I still ended up the night ahead because there were some other things that I was on, but it would have been nice to have gotten that one. Well, you know what? Now it, it makes this, it makes it very interesting now because does Georgia drop down to like a five or a six with that loss? Because you got, Dream, you've got, you know, an undefeated Miami, you got an undefeated Wisconsin, and you have an Oklahoma team that is just putting up a lot of points. Uh, uh, but don't put, dude. Wow, I didn't realize this. They didn't put up any points in the second half. Oh. Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank God I got that over two and a half touchdowns in the first half by Baker Mayfield. Right. Because they put wow, up nothing. I didn't realize that either. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. Just six points in the second half with TCU and Oklahoma. So that really slowed the hell down. But you, you got to wonder now who's going to who's gonna crack the top four here. So the committee's got some uh, pretty interesting decisions on their hands. I would assume you're going to get one of the undefeateds in there, whether it's Wisconsin or Miami. You're going to get one of them in well, there. Well, hold on. The season's not over, so relax. No, I know, know, but you're 10, you're 10 games in, Dream. You only got What's that? You, only, you only got one, what is it, one or two more before your conference championships. That's it, dude. No doubt. Well, somebody could get a, catch a loss. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you only need one loss. Yeah, you only need one loss. Exactly. But uh, well, Because I'm going to tell I, you right now, if you're trying to tell me that Miami's dope and Wisconsin's dope, I'm going to tell you, uh-uh. Because I'll tell you right now, okay, there's, some, there's, te- there's teams with one loss that are better than Miami and Wisconsin. Wisconsin's pass game is garbage. Yeah, I mean, well, they, they've always been a run happy team. No you know doubt, what I'm saying? No they, they've doubt. just they've they've decimated teams on the ground every single time. You know, every single year. So I mean, yeah, take a look at this too. And you and you got to yeah, you got to talk about Auburn. I mean, they do, and they have two losses, kid. You still got to have I'm them not, in the in the in the conversation. It was impressive what they did yesterday with Georgia, but it's you know it's something about college football. And when you're home and you got that big marquee game. You got the number one team coming in. You know you're at you're in the crib. Uh, you know at your own home field. Your crowd is energetic. It's great. I mean, the energy in the home field advantage in college football right. has to be one of the hugest factors of that particular landscape. Yeah, and, and big ups to Fast Eddie, by the way. My God, Dream. That's I didn't catch you. Let me go look. Let me go you got to take a look at what he just sent. Man. That's a good one. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that, Dream, because maybe you're starting to take a look at home team underdogs a little bit on prime time. Because if you said you about. said it's about half the time, right? So I'm just talking about- half the time at plus eight hundred money line, plus three hundred, plus four hundred, plus five hundred. I think you're doing pretty damn well this year. Fast, Eddie. Wow. Yes, you did just murder that. <laughs> <laughs> no, are you kidding me with that? Wow. Um, you know what, though? I, like I said, but, you know, somebody said something. Look, I'm never changing betting on the better team, okay, who I feel is the better team. That's never changed. I don't care what you guys say. I don't care if you got kryptonite at the stadium or whatever, but I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not buying into that. But I did hear somebody say something yesterday, um, and they did say that all of these teams from week to week – can look different. One week they look awesome, the next week they look awful, One week, the next week they look great, the following week they look terrible. But the one team that you don't see that with is Alabama. And I don't care what folks said. I know folks don't want to hear it, and I don't even want to hear it because I don't like them either. I'm sick of them. But Alabama gives you that consistent package week in, week out of what they do, how they do it, get it done. And to me, that's why they win, and I see. I don't see anybody beating them. I, well, I think they win a national title. Yeah, this year. well, you know, Jalen Hurts has been okay. Um, I think it has a lot to do with Saban's um, curfews and his discipline, and you know all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, I, 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 from what I understand, Saban's one of the most strict out there. And I mean, I dream. I know from just my kid playing high school football. You know, he's he's out there six days a week, sometimes seven, and trying yep. to keep his grades up. And just going to his school down the street is difficult. Yep. Now, take a collegiate athlete who's got to travel across the country to play, and has to keep his grades up. And then uh, you know, maybe he's having some some girl problems or something like that or whatever. It, it, yeah, you throw, but you throw all that. You throw, you know. I mean, well, yeah, he's got, he's got, he's got the girlfriend, but then he's got, you know, 
t- 10 cheerleaders, you know, up his ass. You know what I'm saying? And, and then the girlfriend's mad and he's got to sit and deal with her for an hour. I mean, dude, there's a lot of variables here. A lot of dream, a lot of intangibles. A lot of intangibles in the landscape of college football. <laughs> and, and, and then, t- dude, take college hoop. We're to play in a couple days a week. I mean, it's, kid, that is a lot of work for a college athlete. I think that's why a lot of them drop these road games. I really do. I, I think you're on to something. Well, definitely, it's an emotional thing. I agree 100%, and that's definitely one of the factors. I think some of the systems, some of the coaching styles, and some of what these athletes are capable of doing also plays a factor into those situations as well. And obviously, the teams get a little bit more energetic and up for certain situations. Auburn, you know, that was a situation where you knew that they were going to be hyped. That's why when Georgia came out and scored on the opening drive, I was like, okay, Georgia came, you know, they they got a solid game. My thing is prepare a game plan slightly different from your regular game plan Mm -hmm. to just throw them a little surprise. You know, and I really like the way Georgia came out. I said, wow, Georgia looks like they're not having it, but then they did have it. Yeah, they did have it, exactly. Well, good morning to everybody. We are the SBTV Nation, and we just launched our fantasy football contest. It's up on the Twitter page, so look forward to seeing everybody jump on that. And, Dream, I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking with Fast Eddie's picture that he sent me. Fast Eddie did, did, did blow out the, 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 the focus. I mean, listen, yeah, he blew out the focus. Right? Listen, I'm not, I'm not a huge blondes guy, okay? I, I love brunettes. I love dark hair, but... This that you sent me, dude. It says Bears and Patriots money line parlay on it. That's the, the wow. All right, good good job on that one, man. That that one takes the title for today. I, I don't care. You could send me a thousand photos after that. I think that one is going to take the title today. Yeah, that was dope. And I, I'm I'm a big fan of any color hair. <laughs> <laughs> any color hair works for me. You, Blonde, brunette, redhead, whatever it works for me. You know what I'm so feeling? I, and you're going to think I'm kind of crazy, but I think it's sexy, man. It, like the blondes that dye like their hair like it's almost like a gray. Have you seen okay. that? It's kind of like dope, said, right? I, I'm into whatever. Yeah, I think it's kind of. I think it's kind of <laughs> hot. The the bright red hair like Eva Marie. I I don't know if that does it for me. I mean, obviously, I love that, but uh, you know, I, I don't. I just don't know if it really uh, does too much for me. But I can get down with a ball head <laughs> if, the, if the body is right. Well, hey, hey, well, you know, you, you, <laughs> you, you're dealing with a lot of that, you know, when it comes to weave stream, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, <laughs> if the body is right, I can get down with a ball head, Just girl. get the weave back on, please, please. All right, guys. You know what I mean? But let's get into this. Hey, it is week 10. Um, I think we've got a, a pretty decent feel for football now at this point it's time to maybe take the gloves off a little bit and get involved in some gambling no yes a little bit bit higher on the numbers now i started raising my numbers a little bit as i kind of got a feel i think i have a decent feel for the nfl and what's going on here uh right out of the gate at yes elliott is finally gonna handle his suspension i guess all right which is ridiculous Mm mm-hmm should have did it weeks ago I agree. and had it over with. I don't know why they did it this way. Um, the only thought that I had in this was, okay, so they say that players don't really get it going uh, as far as they're getting in shape to play regular season football to like maybe week four. So possibly the Cowboys decided, let's get him conditioned. Let's get out of the gate with him, get off to a fast start with him, get our wins with him, and then take the suspension in the middle. And now let's try to ride it out from the middle to the end. But the thing is, is I don't know that they can catch Philly. Well, here's here's the problem for Dallas. I'm going to put this out there. And, and, I, and I do see a really interesting situation if this all, you know, if the Cowboys – are managed to win some games here. All right, so you, you got the Philadelphia Eagles that are 8-1, and one, tearing through everybody, okay? Now, you got the Dallas Cowboys that are 5-3. and three. If you look at the wild card picture right now, they're, they're on the outside looking in because you got Carolina with six wins and Seattle with six wins. So you don't catch Philly. Carolina and Seattle win 60 to 70% of their games, and Dallas, let's say, wins 50% of their games without Zeke. Dream, they're a couple games out with only two games left. So they could – dude, I'm sorry to say this, but all you Cowboy fans, you may be sitting home for the playoffs this year. 
I don't think so. You don't think I, so. I honestly don't think so. Don't. All right. I don't. Well, I'm going to um, hope that you're right, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. All right. All right. So you, you don't think – so you think that they can win a decent amount of games with Zeke in I sweatpants? Do. Now, could I, Zeke, I could, if he's suspended, can he be there on the sideline, or does he have to sit out the game? I don't believe he can be there. Yeah, all right. I don't believe he can be there, but um, I, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I think he can be. He, he can't be on the sideline. He obviously can be at the game, probably up in the booth or in a box or whatever. But I don't think that he can be on the sidelines. And when you look at Dallas's schedule, so they've got Atlanta, which is a possible win without him because we don't know who is going to show up for Atlanta. They're not um, they got Atlanta. the Eagles. I got them. You know, the Eagles should beat them. Then they got the Chargers. That's a winnable game for them without Zeke. They got the Redskins. That's a winnable game for them without Zeke. They got the Giants. That's a winnable game for them without Zeke. They got the Raiders. That's a winnable game for them without Zeke. And they got Seattle, which is another winnable game for them. And that Seattle game may be the wild card game that knocks Seattle out of it. So Mm. I think the Cowboys look... Listen, I already told you I got the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. (laughs) We'll see, buddy. I already went ham on that right out of the gate. I, so I, I, I made that announcement early um, that I, I like the Cowboys. And I'm not wavering from that. They've been very good to me this season so far. All right, got it. Well, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a really, really nice picture in your brain. And this is the same matchup that we had last year that we capitalized on. So if we can get Philly to keep winning, yep. if we can get Dallas to stay alive in the playoff hunt, okay? Yep. Week 17. New Year's Eve, we are going to pound the hell out of Dallas at Philly when Philly sits everybody. Right. Okay? So right. we got to catch that line. The minute it gets released, before they announce the starting lineups, yep. I'm going to – dude, I'm going to max account Dallas, baby. <laughs> I, I, I really am. If, if they're still alive, if they're not still alive for the playoff, then forget it. And if Philly doesn't have, like, the number one seed – you know, locked up, then obviously it's not going to apply. But if Philly has a number one seed in the NFC, if Dallas is, you know, uh, on the outside looking in, he needs to win one more more game for a playoff, you bet your ass I'm going to take Dallas Cowboys. And what's going to end up happening is you're probably going to get Philly minus three originally, and then it's going to flip to Dallas minus nine. So if you're smart, Keep your eyes on that, guys. We've been doing this now for several years, and the last few years, Dream, Week 17 has been awesome. No doubt. It's been Definitely. fantastic. So, all right, man, let's get right into the NFL, guys. Obviously, we're talking a little bit about the Dallas Cowboys Dream Super Bowl winner, but let's uh, let's move on here and talk with the first game that's on the ticket. I'm pulling it up right now. Saints, Bills. Interesting, interesting wow. game. Because I know that you've been feeling the Saints. I've been loving the Saints, man. The Saints have been good. I typically like the Saints, but I fell off them probably last year. Yeah, well, you know what, Dream? I mean, surprisingly, they've been playing all around very good football. Um, you know, you got the Saints minus one on the road. Uh, there's Pickums, some other places. Um, you got the Saints minus 128 on the money line here, under over 47 and a half. Um, you know, taking a look at this game here, I'm just pulling up some stats. You know, when you look at it initially, Dream, it, this game can go either way, dude. Big time. I mean, it can go either way, but it shouldn't. Why? Because... The Saints should win. I mean, based on what we've seen this season, the Saints should be able to handle that. The problem is, is you add outside, cold, Mm -hmm. on the road, and then you look at the Bills who have a, I'll say, decent defense. Mm. I don't want to say great because when you lose to the Jets, when you have 34 points to the Jets, and I look like, guys, please don't tell me the Jets are dope, please. I, I know they got a good record, but I'm just not buying it still. Um, but when you lose to the Jets, that's a problem for me, especially when you give up 34 points. I know it was on the road for the Bills, but that's an issue. So all of those things make you think, you know, that the Saints should do it. But I can't pull the trigger on the Saints. No, nah, man. I mean, well, the thing, the key to the Saints' um, success this year is that they're actually playing some decent defense stream, um, sure. which is definitely different from what they've done in years past. Now, 
The secondary has only given up 230 yards per game through the air. So yep. that's a big difference. I mean, they're, they're better than the Bills in passing yards allowed per game, which is and, – and a lot of their games are in the dome, guys. So, it's you know, it's, it's easier to throw the ball. You have no elements as far as wind is concerned. But keep in mind on that passing yards, that's a dusty Miami that they held to zero points, a dusty Chicago with a backup, quarter, with a backup quarterback, yeah, okay. and Tampa Bay. All right. So I'm not going to go crazy with that. I understand that. All right, so – you know, taking a look at this game, like we said, we don't know as far as the elements are concerned. I mean, you got – it's 33 Pat, degrees. They play, hold on. Pat, didn't they play Green Bay without Rodgers too? Was Rodgers injured? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that was the case there. So So, so their stats is – I'm not <laughs> – All right. But, but still, but still, I mean, hey, listen. You're still, I mean, you're still playing, in, you know, NFL teams here, Dream. And they're only giving up 19.4 points per game defensively. So that's a great recipe there for success. I don't like the game. I don't like the Saints on the road. I couldn't even begin to tell you a total on this one because, you know, you could bet the under thinking that the Buffalo Bills defense is going to show up. And then but you're betting an under against Breezy. So I'm going to pass on this. I don't like it. Hey, you know what? I got to be honest with you. Looking over this right now, I'm looking at the Saints' last five opponents. They didn't play one starting NFL quarterback. Really? With this, okay, so I'm sorry. Stafford was the only one when they played Detroit. And I don't even know if that was a game that Stafford was banged up in because Stafford did miss a game. But the Saints have not played one starting quarterback. Mm. They didn't play it with Miami. They didn't play it with Green Bay. They've got the backup with Chicago, and I think Winston went down, and he was halfway pulled in that game against them as well. They've been playing backup quarterbacks their last five games. You're right. Okay. Well, we'll see. I guess they got pretty lucky. Gentlemen, I'm calling for the Bills. Calling for the Bills, huh? I'm not playing it, but if I got to take a team Uh, today, i take go Bills. Kid, with Tyrod Taylor... I know, I know. You're taking Tyrod Taylor over Drew Brees. I'm just putting that out there. I I, I just feel like I think I I like the Bills. All right, you like the Bills as a home team dog. I uh, I like the Bills (laughs) because I like the I like the Bills because New Orleans hasn't played a real starting NFL quarterback. Okay, next game on the ticket, boys and girls. We got the Green Bay Packers without Aaron Rodgers at the Chicago Bears. Uh, Bears three and five, two and two at home. Uh, taking a look at the line here. The line is Chicago favored minus four and a half. Under over of two. I'm sorry, 37 and a half. Dream, I got to be honest with you, man. The Green Bay Packers without Aaron Rodgers. Uh, with Rap. Hundley? I don't know. It's tough. Rap. Rap. I, I, they got no pass rush. Not that they ever had anyway. Um, I, I think Clay Matthews has really fell off. You know, over the last. <laughs> several years here injuries yeah I, I i don't dude this 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 is a really really ugly game here for me i'm gonna it, it, think about trying to take the bears though you know i know it, it, it's 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 still the bears guys so it is still the bears but i i do like the bears in this position right here because you know green bay against detroit look absolutely dreadful on a short week traveling <laughs> Um, I like the Bears here. The Bears will be home. You know, they're going to dumb down the offense. They're going to have some success on on Green Bay's defense for sure. And I expect Green Bay's defense to be out in the field a lot. And I like the Bears to win this game. Now, it's not going to be a pretty game. I don't think it'll be a blow up by any stretch of the imagination. But I think if you get this in a teaser, uh, I, I would get. I would definitely, at worst case scenario, you have to buy it down to minus two and a half. Do not give four. That's stupid. Okay. And (laughs) I would put this in a teaser spot. Definitely. If you could get the Bears plus three or plus three and a half, I think that's sweet. All right. Sounds good. I mean, uh, I'm taking a look at it here. I mean, 37 and a half, it's definitely a low total, man. Um, you know, which, which is apropos and I understand it. Um, you know, defensively, when you look at both of these teams, you know, they do give a lot of points up defensively. So, you know, I mean, if you, you average the two, it's about, let's see, about 22 20, points. 22, yeah, 22 apiece. Um, but the Bears don't really put up much. Oh, man, you, you got to throw all Green Bay's uh, passing yard stats out the window because you got Hundley at the helm here. 
Um, they it, it, listen. If they were going to have any success whatsoever, I think Green Bay would have fought in the Detroit game at home on prime time, but they didn't. I think this is a real tough situation for them. I, I don't like this game. If I had to lean, I would take the Bears on a money line, but I just don't like it, Dream. Can't What's do a it. lean, son? What's, What's a lean? <laughs> What's a lean? <laughs> what the hell is a lean? All right. Let's move on to the next one here. We got the 0-8 Cleveland Browns Cleve. versus the Detroit Lions. High off their big win. This weekend, or I'm sorry, on Monday night versus the Green Bay Packers. And uh, let's just take a look at what the line is. We've got do, 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 do. Detroit minus 11 and a half under over of 42 and a half. Dream. Yes. What do you think here? I mean, can, can the Browns win a game? No, not. Well, they can, but not today. Not the today. The problem for them is that, you know, this would be a perfect spot for them if Detroit wasn't so shaky this season you mm-hmm. know what i mean but this is a game detroit needs to win and has to get just to get their season back together and get above 500 and they get it i mean they're at home you know they've had they had some success last week throwing the ball i mean stafford's gonna throw the ball and have success throwing the ball against any team but they looked a little better last week you know abdulado is killing him with his fumbles mm-hmm. right been a fumble monster so they got to get a hold of that a little bit he's got to hold the ball a little bit higher i don't see i mean cleveland plays everybody hard you know they, they're gonna play him hard they're not gonna lay down for him but at the end of the day detroit you know wipes the floor with him now do you give the 11 no mm. no don't give the 11 i understand you know don't 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 do that so teaser money line parlay situation gangs we got all the tools to manipulate these lines in our favor i'm gonna throw this in a money line parlay myself and i'm gonna take detroit you guys can tease it uh if you don't like the money line parlay you can tease it i'm just gonna get detroit in a neat just win situation for me first piece of the puzzle in a money line parlay i like detroit money line parlay with detroit huh yep yeah it doesn't pay anything though. You got you're gonna have no, to. No, I'm, gonna have I'm to adding add three. A, I'm yeah, adding two more teams to it. Yeah, win. you got to add a few more teams there. Um, yeah, I, Dream. I, I don't, dude. There's times where I like the card. So far, I am not feeling this card whatsoever. Well, this card's not. No, <laughs> you're not. I don't think you're gonna feel it because I looked at it yesterday and I was like scratching my head. There's a lot of nasty matchups and I didn't. I didn't like it at all. All right, so. But I do like Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Going to the next game here. Let's pull it up. Next game on the ticket, we have the ba- oh my god, Bengals yep. Titans. Yep. <laughs> I, I can tell you this much: I'm going to take the field goal for the first score. That's for sure in this one. Because what I do, guys, is I take the nastiest game on the board and I do that. And you know what? I've been, I've done very very well. Dream, you realize that there's some books out there that actually give me like 50 50 propositions at like plus one thirty. I know. I, I had. I had the other night. I had. I, I was telling Weaver about this. I had. It was um, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Just just off subject, real quick. Versus another team. To the other team to win the face off was plus one thirty. I'm like scratching my. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? Like that's a fifty fifty way to win. I, I don't know. I just. I, I just saw it and jumped all over it, man. But um, something like this, yeah, field goal in the first score of the game. I really like that. I, I, the nastiest matchup on the board here. Uh, you've got the Bengals and Tennessee Titans. Bengals plus four, Tennessee minus four, under over 41. Any thoughts on this nasty game? Yeah, I like game? the Tennessee Titans because I will never take a team with a with an awful-ass offense. And that's exactly with that Cincinnati, that Cincinnati Bengal offense is so. It you know what? It reminds me of Florida's offense. Oh Florida God! Gators. It's just putrid, terrible, nasty, horrible. And I like Tennessee Titans to win this game. It's another piece of the money line parlay. So with Detroit, and the second piece is going to be Tennessee. I like Tennessee to get it done. I hate Cincinnati. All right, so that should terrible. that should even out your money a little bit then. Yep, and there's one more team. Okay. Oh, good. All right, so you, yeah. so you might actually be plus money at the end. Um, yeah, for me, dude, no way. I, I, other than proposition bets on this, forget it. I, I just I just don't have a side. 
I don't like anything about this game whatsoever. Because uh, I just don't know what to expect out of either one. I mean, you would think that Cincinnati is a better team than they've showed, but, dude, I, I, I think they're trying to get your boy out of there. <laughs> if, if he doesn't, I mean, if he doesn't, like, turn this thing around and actually win a playoff game this year. Yeah, and actually win a play. Even if they were good and they lost in the playoffs again, I think you get rid of them. He should. They should have. They should have got rid of them a while ago. Personally, Definitely but you know, hey, that, Lewis that is still there. The All right, next game on a ticket. We've got the Colts facing the six and two Steelers. Colts are three and six here um, on the road. You got Pittsburgh minus eleven, and this can't be right. They're giving it's a right, dude. It's right. The Pittsburgh Steelers are given a road. Uh, they're, they're on the road. You, you know what this team is capable of on the road, right? I do. Awful stuff. I know. Remember last year when uh, they were puking in Miami? I do. But my thing <laughs> is, is, is the Colts defense is, by the way, puking. Yeah. <laughs> The ah, Colts have never had a good kid, defense. I don't even Pitt, know, Even man. when Peyton Ball was there, their defense was booty. No, Pittsburgh only puts up 21 points a game. That, that That's their average. I mean, the Colts give up a ton. I mean, 28.9 points per game, they're allowed. But Jacoby, but when you look at the Steelers, kid. like, they're, their Steelers are built to go ham uh, in, in, yeah. in, indoors. When? <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, dude. I know I haven't seen it either, but they we know that their potential, like they, like you put the Steelers line up against this awful Colt defense and in a dome, like they should go bananas Son, against the Colts. They 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 beat Cleveland by three points on the road. I, I know they they had to go to overtime in Chicago and lost. Son, I, I, the Colts know, are going to be I, a pain in the ass today. Watch. I hear you, but I'm just saying, if you look at it, <laughs> they should go crazy. I, 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 they should, but they're not. <laughs> Kid. So you're taking, so you taking a Colts plus 11 I player? might. I might have to, dude. All right. Please post that play. <laughs> you do it. I might have to take the 11 and Please a half, take kid. The 11 and I oh. want to see the picture on a ticket on Twitter. So. Oh, wait. Hold on a minute. It's it's plus 11 and a half at minus 130. Okay. So they're, they're, they're playing tricks on me with the line here on this book that I'm working with. Um, the, It's plus 10. I don't, dude, even. I, I don't know. You know what? I, th- I dream. I think the Colts are more than capable of covering that. I really do. And a total of 46 and a half. If the Colts, if the Colts cover, they're going to need to put up some points. So maybe a teaser situation. You get the Colts up to 17. You get the total down to 39 and a half. That's probably the move. The Colts give up 407 yards. Okay. I'm away. Well, uh, listen. The Steelers, if the Steelers could ever wake the hell up, though. And I'm with you because I know about this. I- I hear you. I, it's very hard to try to take the Steelers. Yeah. You know what they do on the road? Go in there thinking they're dope, thinking dunk. Ben throw a couple of interceptions, laughing. Antonio Brown clowning on the side. Right? The next thing you know, it's you know it's quarter to four, and it's the Colts are up ten uh, three. That's what I'm. Just, that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I I see that. But if the Steelers would ever wake up though and really deploy all those weapons and use them as they should. They should run them out of the building in the first half. I know it's without Watson and all, but the Colts are coming off a big win last week in Houston. Maybe feeling themselves a little bit, Dream. I don't know. Pittsburgh. I, I think. I think Pittsburgh's gonna. I think Pittsburgh's gonna struggle with the Colts. I don't know why. Call it a hunch, but I think they're gonna struggle a little bit. It, it, and you know what? It doesn't get any better than it, dude. It just keeps like all these games just keep getting worse. Sorry, yeah. guys. We don't put this product out there. We just talk about it. You got the four and five Jets at the two and six Bucks, kid. Your Bucks, dope. Dude, that's that, no, <laughs> not my Bucks. That's Dizzle, kid. The NFL, dope. like I said before, the, there's like four good teams, <laughs> and the NFL's running around talking about why ratings are down, and it's because the players. Are, it's not down because the players are kneeling. It's down because you're bringing us <laughs> Bears, freaking Packers with no Aaron Rodgers. You're giving well, me Cleveland. Lions, 
Titans, Bengals, and now Jets, Bucks. Like, who <laughs> wants to watch that? Anybody that has an edge is going to be watching a dream. Anybody yeah, that thinks that. It, that's right. All right now the NFL is living off of gamblers and fantasy football. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's the only people interested in the NFL right now. No doubt. Pick them. It's a pick them. Dream. You're going to, I don't know, you might be 100% on this with me. Tampa Bay Buccaneers win this game. It's a pick them. I can't, dude. I cannot take the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You can't. And I can't take the Jets either. <laughs> <laughs> a jet, I, dude. The Jets are 4-5. and five. I, I know. I can't do it, but Tampa Bay is Boom. as dysfunctional as who is starting for Tampa Bay at the quarterback spot, hat. Fitzy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait, wait, wait. Fitzy does want to get back at the Jets. Uh-oh. I know. Okay, wait a minute. We got a little yeah. story oh, right yep. here. Yep. You my got bad. A little... <laughs> All right, my bad. I forgot about that. There is a little storyline here. So Fitzy will come out to play. Now, will the rest of the team be inspired, though, is the question. Hat, I'm with you. Want to get it? I'm getting it. I'm t- I'm going. I'm I'm taking Tampa Bay now. Oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> and now you gotta wa- now you gotta watch this, right? That's the worst part. The most intriguing storyline of all of NFL today, Dream. Hat, we got it. All right, it's an SBTV Nation special super play call. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers today to get this thing done. Doctor Dan is somewhere. Dancing, yeah, in right. The hotel room right now. Listen to this. I mean, the Jets don't win on the. <laughs> Je- they're finally listening to me. The Jets don't win on the road, by the way. So they're Dan, one. The only reason we're taking them is because Winston's not playing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Right on. All right. Um. Uh, just reading this, the Seahawks could face discipline for violating concussion protocol during Thursday's game. Interesting. Did you see it? I did not. Russell Wilson goes to the sideline. Oh, yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. They, they lowered uh, the pop-up tent thing that they got, and he, goes, he walks right back out of yeah. it. Yeah. I'm fine. Yep, got it. All right, so next game on the ticket, we got the Vikings and the Redskins. We got this game has now jumped. It, it, it was it was minus two earlier. Um, I'm still seeing minus twos, minus ones, stuff like that. So it's anywhere from a pick them to minus two, depending on how much money you want to pay on your juice, guys. Under over a 41 Vikings at Redskins. Dream, I, I, you know what? The Vikings are six and two, but I'm not sold. I'm well, really not got sold. A solid defense hat. Yeah, they you know. do, but I'm still, I'm just not sold. So you put your sold on the Redskins? Well, you know, listen, <laughs> you get the Redskins playing inspired football at home. This is a, this a, this is a ugly game. But I, I don't know if I don't know if Minnesota is going to go out there and beat them in in Washington, Dream. I don't know if Minnesota's going to beat them in Washington either, but I, I, I do like Minnesota in this spot. I'm not playing them, but I do like They're just – the Redskins have a makeshift offensive line right now, Hat, where they just basically grabbing guys and starting them. I should have actually applied to see if they would let me play because um, that's what they're doing right now with that offensive line. Against a defense like the Vikings, that's a problem. Okay, I know that they had some success last week. I'll give them that, uh, and they were able to, you know, to, to work out their, you know, offensive woes as far as the offensive line is concerned. But uh, I, th- I definitely think that the pass rush of this Viking team is going to be problematic for them today. Now, the problem is, can the Vikings put up enough offense to deter it? Because, you know, I don't like the Redskins defense. I, uh, well. Tough game last week um, to watch, but they did hold Seattle in check, and Seattle's historically been a n- abysmal offense. Um, I don't know. I take a look at this game, man. I mean, you know, it, it, that is an impressive win for them to go into the 12th man and win, Dream. Washington right, Seattle, may be feeling themselves yeah, a little bit. We talked about Seattle in that awful I know. offense that they got. I know. You know still and, a win. And that was kind of impressive. I, I'll give you that kind of, but not really to me because I, 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 I don't – Like, I'm not impressed by that still. I tell you what, though. I like the Vikings to win this game. I think the Vikings beat them. Yeah, I think the pass rush is going to be too much for them to overcome. And Cousins will make mistakes under duress. And I think the Vikings will beat them. Very nasty game. Very nasty game. 
but I do like the Vikings. I'm not playing it, but I like the Vikings. Well, you know what? If if anything, you know, if Washington's going to have their success, it's going to be through the air because um, Minnesota's one of the best rush defenses in the NFL. They only give up 81 yards a game, bro. And um, I think I think Kissing Cousins going to do a little bit better than you think. Uh, I think he's going to do better. I don't think they're going to win it. No. All right, sounds good. All right, so we're going to move over to the next spot here, guys. I'm pulling it up right now. We've got oh god. Chargers, Jags, Dream. Oh, that's so awesome. That's the reason. Why <laughs> hey, listen, we got on the nastiest game of the board, so you know what? It, 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 I I, th- I smell opportunity everywhere I look, but they're they are nasty. Um, take, yeah, what's up? This this game will keep the ratings high. Yeah, this will keep the ratings super high. <laughs> uh, you got the Jags minus five and a half uh, under over a forty point five. Wow, Dream. I, I'm I'm not a believer in the Jags. Sorry. Not, they don't do it for me. I'm not a believer in the Jags, but I damn sure ain't a believer in the Chargers. Oh, brutal. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. The Jags have been decent at home. What are you talking about? Yeah, I, I know, but I, I'm just not a believer, they just man. They Cincy 23 to 7. Yeah, well, it's Cincinnati. Um, and, they, I mean, and, they, and they kept, they held the Colts to no points. Dude, you know, and, and this team, I mean, the, listen, the Jags are probably super rested, man. I mean, you know, you got, you got a bye week and week eight. Then week nine, they had a home game, and now they have another home game. So, you know, I mean, they've been, they haven't had to travel, haven't had to do anything. Um, you know, the Chargers are also coming off a of bye week last week, so they're pretty well rested, too. So that probably goes out the window here. Um, I don't know. I, I I can see this game being ugly. I, I, I don't like it at all. I'm going to stay away from it. Jags. Just get it under three and a half. Under three and a half. What about a money line? Yeah. Do you money line it? Or, yeah, you can put it in a money line parlay. I'm not putting it in my play, but you can put it in a money line parlay. But, or, or you know, tease it. Just get rid of the five. You got to get it to two and a half. Jags win this game. You like the Jags to win the game. Yeah. If you're, dude, the Chargers. God, Jesus. <laughs> Horrible. All right. Horrible. A couple more games on the ticket here. We actually have four more. And it uh, looks like, um, you know, the four o'clocks might not be so bad today, Dream. First game on a ticket, you got the Texans at the Rams. Um, you know, the Rams, uh, dude, either the Giants are just that bad or the Rams are maybe a team to actually look at this year. No, 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 no. The Giants are that bad. The Giants are that bad. <laughs> the Giants are that bad. The Rams are okay. I'm still not sold that this Ram team is good. I don't care what you guys tell me. I am not sold on this Ram team still. I know everybody loves Todd Gurley in the fantasy league because he keeps blowing up with these boys. But he reminds me of Sean Alexander. Remember when Sean Alexander used to get all those touchdowns? He used to get like one. They always put him in for like, for Seattle used to always get stopped like on the one. And then Sean Alexander would just run it in. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. That's what Gurley reminds me of this season. But I know you guys say he's been balling, but... You know, 161 carries, 686 yards, okay? That's not balling, really. I, I get the seven touchdowns, and, it, and it's been breakout spots, but when you do kick carries to yards ratio, that's not awesome. Dude, the Rams are giving 13 and a half. Yeah, because Texans, man, without... I know. Jeez. I know. I, I it's it's so tough when you lose them. your quarterback, man. I, I get I it. Bad for Oh, wow. I'm so bad for them. But uh, I don't know that the Rams should be giving them that, that much I, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I think that's a lot of points. Uh, I, I, dude, listen. The Rams c- clearly showed me that they could ball, like, outside on grass and, and, and going. I know they beat a Giants team, but they murdered the Giants. And, and dude, the Rams have murdered a lot of teams this year, Dream. I mean, they, they killed the Giants. They killed Arizona. They, they beat up. I mean, they they win their games pretty big, and they won at Jacksonville. Now you got them home. I don't know, man. I think the Rams uh, definitely going to do it. I'm just not. I don't like the game. I don't like the spread. Don't like the total. Balling back. I'm going to look up some prop. See, the thing is, guys. You know, you could do the show like Dream. I mean, we've talked about doing shows. You know, a couple days prior to events and stuff like that, but. Even this morning before, I got in the office early and I was looking at propositions. And there's only yep. a handful of books that even have propositions posted yet. So it's it's nuts. Like they do it like an hour before kickoff. It's absolutely insane. Or two hours before. 
which doesn't give us a lot of time to prepare. If there was some good props, guy, there's going to be some good props I'm going to find, but it's going to be after the show. It is what it is, though. But um, Rams should win this game, go to 7-2, and two, most likely win that division, too. Watch out for the Rams. Going to be running neck and neck with Philly. Dream two young quarterbacks that's running awesome. the uh, awesome. the NFC here. I can't wait to see the Rams in the playoffs so I can murder <laughs> oh, against when, them. When, when, when Seattle goes into there and wins. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or kissing cuz goes in there Somebody and wins. Somebody <laughs> goes in there and blows them right out right in the first, like, right in the first yep. playoff game. And they're all, excited. all right, Dream. But you know what? It, it, it is it, – um, you know, it, I guess it's a good look for Los Angeles, the fact that the Rams are having this kind of success. Yeah. You yeah, know, I, I, so I guess it's a good look for them. Bad look for Seattle, for, for St. Louis. Um, but don't worry, St. Louis. Just keep watching because the, the Rams will get smoke showed in the playoffs. Yeah. First round, <laughs> and you'll have the last You're lap. absolutely right about that, Dream. I hear you. Well, I mean, listen, but, you know, it goes to tell you, I mean, you got a couple of young special quarterbacks here being, um, you know, Guelph and Wentz. I mean, they're, they're, kid, they're running the NFC right now. You know, I mean, so so when you when you give in it, this goes back to the to the argument we've had of quarterbacks like Jameis Winston and Mariota and stuff like and Bortles. You know, I mean, they've just been, you know, middle of the road, you know, compared to compared to these guys. You know, yes, you, I might, do. you might have some future Hall of Famers you're looking at if they're playing this well. You know, uh, Carson Wentz has been good. Well, Carson Wentz has been good. Uh, uh, Golf's you know, been good, too, man. Can't you? Golf. Ah, I don't have. I, I haven't been impressed with golf. Why? I just haven't. I mean, I haven't been impressed with him. I, I don't. I'm just not a believer in this Ram team. I'm not. I'm, I'm just. I don't. I think he's been in great situations and it's panned out for him. But uh, he's, you know, I mean, you have to beat who you play. And he has. Yeah. We talked about there's only four good teams in the NFL anyway. But you know, I just don't. I, 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 with Wentz, I see it. He looks great. He's a good quarterback. With golf, I'm still on the fence. All right, because and, and you got you know another you know obviously an injured Watson, who has been the and, star and as Watson's well. Watson's dope. Yeah, so, so, Watson's dope. The problem with Watson is he's a run and an athletic quarterback, and you 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 worry about athletic quarterbacks because this is what happens. You lose them for the season. Now it's a wrap. Yeah, exactly. All right. Next game on the ticket, we got your Super Bowl champion Cowboys, who are five and three, <laughs> and you said without Zeke, correct? Yes. Going into the four and four Falcons. Um, taking a look at this line, the Falcons are actually minus three and a half, which I understand, with an under over of forty nine and a half. So Prescott got a lot of work to do today, my man. Yes. And I mean, who's going to be carrying the ball majority at a time for Dallas right now? Alfred Morris. Probably. Alfred Morris going to get the majority of the touches today. Um, dude, I got to be honest with you. I think the Falcons roll them today. I really do. I, 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 I Falcons, and and I hate it because they suck sometimes. I think this is a breakout game for them. I think they have to come out and show some dominance today, Dream. I got to take the Falcons. Well, I bet on the Cowboys all season. I bet them week in and week out all season. And it's been a pretty lucrative situation for me. It's been positive. Um, I like what I've seen out of the Dallas Cowboys. This road is concerned. It really sucks that they're getting Zeke out of here right now because the Cowboys have a lot of momentum uh, in, a, in, a, in, a successful, in a successful program. However, I kind of also like them losing Zeke right now because it should improve Dak Prescott's quarterbacking, especially when you think about preparing his team to go into the playoffs where playoff football's a lot different than regular season football. So now this is going to give him an opportunity to start playing as a quarterback in the NFL and not solely depending on that run game, you know, as his, you know, safety. Um, Falcons defense, garbage. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is going to be an interesting game. I, I'm not taking the Cowboys. I'm not taking the Falcons. I think that the over is probably the play in this spot. I don't like this game. I may like it more at 345, uh, depending on what happened yeah, with right. Tampa Bay. But um, I don't really like this game right now because I can give you arguments for both yeah. teams winning. You know, I it, it, the, if, if the Falcons were as dysfunctional as they've been, I would hands down go with the Falcons. But watching the Falcons this season, man, they drive you insane. Oh, dude. Well, the loss to Miami at home was the, probably the, 
worst. They do. They drive you insane. And that defense is going to have no type of pass rush at all on Prescott with, the, with Dallas' offensive line. And Morris should have some success running the ball on him. So I'm not willing to write off the Cowboys in this game here and give the nod to that that Atlanta Falcon team. That They can't. That, that team, I don't know what their thing is. Well, you know what I mean? I'm looking at what they've done at home. I mean, they did lose to Miami and Buffalo in, no doubt. A, in Atlanta, dude. That's what so, I'm saying. I don't know, though. But they, you know what? They, the Cowboys, kid, everybody comes to play when you come to the Cowboys. You, you're not overlooking the Cowboys at all. I think this team is going I think it's going to be rocking in the stadium. I think it's going to be sold out, 100% packed. Falcon fans going nuts. Um, you know, without Zeke, they fall down a little early. Matty Ice gets a little get a, gets a little groove going. You know, fourteen three lead. It's gonna be tough for Dallas Cowboys to come back from that dream. Yeah, I like I like Atlanta. I gotta go Atlanta today. Good luck. All I right. think the over is the play. Okay. All right. Next game on the ticket. <laughs> next next game on the ticket. One and seven Giants. Zero oh and nine Niners. Dream. Yes. There we go. Did the Niners catch their first win? Are the Giants really that bad? It's another ratings he strategy. Right <laughs> Giants the on the road, minus two and a half. A favorite, a one in 17 favored. Under over a 41 and a half. Dream, do the Niners win a game? Well, they're putting a new, they're putting a new piece out there. Oh, they are? Quarterback. Yes. They're putting Grappolo out there? <laughs> Grappolo's going. He's, get, he's getting a start today. Oh, beautiful. So, it will be very interesting to see what goes down here. Um, as of right now, the Giants are the better team. That's that's not saying a lot, okay? But the Niners are home. Defense has been decent. They're putting Garoppolo out there. I'm going to call Niners. Yeah. I'm going to call Niners in this game. I mean, guys, I'm not playing. You, <laughs> I don't play garbage game, and I'm not getting involved with it, but... Yeah, I do like the Niners to win this game today. I think they're going to have some success against the Giants. And the Giants, man, are just... I mean, even though I said they're the better team, they're bad. Big ups to my man, DJ, 100 grand, sounding like uh, every other Cowboy fan in the world. Says the Cowboys (laughs) are going to win by seven points today. So, you know what? If you're at a bar, I'm sure you're going to hear all the Cowboy fans clapping and going crazy on every first down, every flag. Even when the other team calls a timeout, they're going nuts. It's just... Guys are a little, little too emotional. Why? Why you gotta go with the seven point? DJ just said he's gonna win, man. Don't call out no <laughs> he's numbers. Gonna, he's calling an adjusted line dream. All right, seven points. Seven points. All right, guys, we're halfway full on the fantasy football contest. They're ready. The link is on our Twitter page. So take a look at that, and we'll go from there. Looking forward to it. We got two hours left. Um, final game on a ticket is Sunday night football. We got 8.30 game. We got the 6-2 and two Patriots who are actually undefeated on the road 3-0 and versus the 3-5 and five putrid Denver Broncos. Dream, the Denver Broncos quarterback situation has been brutal. We got the New England Patriots. Stupid. New England Patriots minus uh, 6. It's stupid. I mean, the Broncos, look, I, I, John Elway is a genius. He played the quarterback position. Explain to me how you don't have a good quarterback on your team. You know, Peyton Manning, you lose him. You knew that those guys, none of those guys were serviceable. And it's like they just were being stubborn. Like, oh, oh okay, we're good. We're yep. good. Like, Von Miller's awesome. Like, so what, dude? He's not the quarterback. If you don't have a quarterback in the NFL, you will not be successful. You need a good quarterback to be successful in the NFL. I don't care how good your defense is. And I know the Cavs are going to go back to Trent Dilfer and the Ravens. But still, he was decent. You just can't do it with these three. These three guys are terrible. And now in comes the uh, the Patriots with Belichick and Brady. So Brady's going to give you enough offense to put points up. And Belichick's going to give you enough defense to keep your offense off the field in Denver. I love the Patriots. I the this is my I love the Patriots. This is my last piece of the, the three team parlay. So you're gonna get them. I'm getting them. Yeah. All right, man. I mean, so dude, looking at the the quarterbacks. So we got Brock Osweiler or um, the other dude, guy. Who in cares? There. They should let Von Miller play quarterback. <laughs> Von Miller. <laughs> right on, kid. All right. So 
that's going to do it for all the games here. I don't really see anything else that's tickling my fancy. Um, I, I, I like the Atlanta spot, kid. I got to go with the Atlanta Falcons today. Don't I do have it. to. Don't do I got to go Atlanta Falcons, and I... I t- I gotta Don't go Bucks. Do I gotta go Falcons Bucks today. Don't do it. Falcons Bucks pays dope, kid. I probably pays three to one if I parlay those two together on the money line. All right, you're gonna be. I'm telling you that Dallas team, that, that Atlanta team's a headache. All right, uh, let's <laughs> let's get this show out of here, man. Unless you got anything else to add, brother. I got nothing else to add, gang. We're gonna get out of here. I want to thank. I'm gonna try to pull you up real quick. J100 Grand out there. We've got Star Cat Space. What's going on? Welcome to the party. Also, we got my man Fast Eddie 72 doing his thing. Primetime Capper. Big shouts out to him. My boy Scott Weaver. What's up? Send a big shout out to Tiger Clinch. Also, Cash Action Bets in the house. Direct Sports Solution, Mr. Charlie over there. Sin City Maverick. Vegas Girl 92661. Rick Lopez. Always good to see you and talk to you as well. Terrence Smack. Jay Gotts. Um, big shout outs to Dr. Dan, wherever he's at. Irvin is out there as well. Jonesy, Dollar Sign Sports, Frank Vincolato, Deets Picks, Joseph Del Rosario, Jim Roman Zadu, Sir Mata, the incredible Molly Mar, my boy OJFB, Jay Snyder, Chris D, Buster Carr, Jeff Ryan, my man Game Changer, Wayne Yarborough, Philly Picks, Rob Dog, and so many more. Gang, good luck today out there. Be easy. I'm going, I'm going, let's see, just a cap of what I'm doing. It's a money line parlay with three teams, okay? It's going to be the Detroit Lions. Excuse me. It's going to be the Detroit Lions. It's going to be the Patriots. And I had one more team in there. What's the other team? Oh, the Tennessee Titans. I'm sorry. Detroit Lions, Tennessee Titans, and the New England Patriots. Uh, The side play is going to be by itself. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers by themselves. Me and Hack is going to go with a little bit of one of those uh, storyline factors, we'll call it. A storyline factor in the Tampa Bay game. Uh, always remember who you with. Make the most of each and every day. She cannot get this time back. Peace. All right, guys. Great show today. Dream. Enjoy kicking it. Great to have you back on the program, brother. So, uh, all right, guys. So, hey, listen, I'm going Falcons. I'm going Bucks, And I'm going to take some of the nastiest games on the board and bet the field goal being the first score. It's usually plus money and profitable. We love you to death. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your football Sunday. We'll see you next week. Take care. Peace.